Yeah, did Epcot last night. And Magic Kingdom today. Yeah, and we did get their park opening. Yeah, at nine o'clock this morning. And what do you think, crowds? Uh, crowds were low. I, I mean. At the beginning? Uh, yeah, I thought so. I mean, everybody rushed to Seven Dwarfs, I think, but we went and got on uh, Peter Pan and then Big Thunder and then um, Haunted Mansion and a couple others. Yeah, I think we did pretty all well. Of it, all of Adventureland. Adventureland. So, and every single one we went to was pretty much walk on. Jungle Cruise was like 10, 15 minute wait. But... Splash Mountain down all day. Oh yeah, Splash Mountain's been down for the last two days, I think. So, what weren't able to get probably our last rides in on that yeah yet uh and then we left took a little break had lunch and yeah then took a break at like 1 30 and mm. came back to the hotel lunch was not bad it, it was pretty easy to get in and out of sleepy hollow refreshments yep no mobile ordering there but no i had a dole whip at aloha isle and there was mobile ordering and maybe it's just because we're so used to uh Disney's mobile orderings and systems possibly, but I found their system to be a lot easier and quicker than the universal fiasco we had. Yeah, I don't know. Once I did the second order on Universal, the credit card was saved, so that was a lot easier. Yeah. But and my Disney experience makes it easy to save your credit card information, so Right. So I took a little break, came back to the hotel cool off which turned out to be the right thing to do even though the shorter hours it's better than probably pushing on because you can get pretty much on just pretty walk on, on everything. everything i mean when we went back to the park it we was raining a little like bit but 4 30 yeah and walked on Four? pretty much all of Everything. tomorrowland mm -hmm. did buzz and space and dumbo seven dwarfs that was our longest wait probably 25 30 minutes um, at like 5.30 oh, yeah, tonight. But, but still, if you were to jump into line for, if somebody were to tell you Seven Dwarfs is 20 minutes. Yeah. I, I mean. <laughs> so, and that was like the longest wait of the day. So crowd yeah. level, everything else was walk on. Jungle Cruise, we waited a little bit in the morning. But, yeah, 15 yeah. minutes or so. But I mean, if you ever had the chance to do any of these rides at yeah. 15, 20 minutes, you would do them. Yeah. So, not that big a thing, but on to the highlight or low light of the day. <laughs> we had dinner at Tony's down. Tony's. So, Tony's, Tony's Town Square, Square restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> First time for both of us there. Yeah. And we're just trying to check the boxes <laughs> of all the Magic Kingdom yeah. restaurants. We're, we're one away for you. Yeah, Cinderella's Royal Table. And He's I'm, still on the list. I'm everything else. But the last time you ate Cinderella's Royal Table, you were like 15. <laughs> well, I was older than that. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a while since I've eaten there. Uh, they've, they've probably changed the menu since then. <laughs> probably. That's probably a fair statement. So, um, so Tony's was... Well, let's talk about what our impression was before we went in. Okay. What we, so thought, we... What we thought was going to happen. We thought it was going to be standard to maybe below standard Italian food. Yeah. Based on some other like blogs and things like that that we'd read. All the reviews have been not Not stellar. Great. So we didn't go in with, with high expectations. Um, but we knew that. But we knew that. So I had shrimp fettuccine alfredo. Well, let's talk... We can get to that, but uh, um, bread service was... It was bread. <laughs> barely bread. It was like little, uh, like Pizza Hut breadsticks uh, almost. Yeah. A little uh, olive dipping oil. And I will tell you this, that, and, and we'll see this come into play later, but the server was, was good. It was super nice. Yeah, I, th yeah, I think it was... friendly and attentive. Uh, they did sit us in like a section where we were right next to two other tables so while well, the whole rest of the restaurant was kind of open so in covid times i thought that the seating placement was kind of odd but whatever so uh yeah the entrees shrimp fettuccine alfredo and the i went for parm. the chicken parm because any italian restaurant uh is supposed to be judged by their chicken parm and where what do you think uh <laughs> what, I, I what was... did you think I was not a huge fan of the shrimp fettuccine alfredo. Um, 
I like fettuccine alfredo. I'm kind of a, that's pretty much what I get at every Italian restaurant. Um, this was very, very heavy on the Parmesan cheese. So it made it a little bitter and for lack of a better term, kind of feet like. <laughs> It was very strong. Feet like I didn't even hear that one at dinner. I, sorry, that just registered. It's kind feet like of feet like. It's a little, you know, like feet like cheese. It's a little strong. feet like cheese. Yeah, it's a little strong. It's bad. It was not good. The shrimp were fine, but it was very heavy on the Alfredo. I tried the Alfredo. It was it was heavy and definitely a lot of Parmesan on mm -hmm. top. I didn't. Uh, she didn't share I'm not shrimp. A, I'm so, not a Parmesan fan. Um, but uh, to, to counter that, I had the chicken Parmesan. <laughs> <laughs> so for not being a Parmesan fan, I had the full chicken parm. Yeah. Uh, and I described it to her as essentially a... TV dinner, I think. Uh, is what TV said. dinner may have come out of my mouth. Also, uh, maybe our local, which we do not live in, a, in an area with a lot of options. For restaurants a really rural area and our local italian place may have done better yeah. mine was 26 mine was 22 or 24, 24 i 24. think it was so we're talking 50 dollars, 26 dollars for a chicken parm um it was a lot it was a large it was, it was a large with a side of like spaghetti too yeah like i said service was great which will come into play now <laughs> <laughs> so i we both got cokes i got a coke and drank most of it uh, until I realized that there was definitely something in the bottom of my cup. I said, oh, it's an ice cube. And I was like, no, I don't think it's an ice and cube. I said, oh, it's a lemon wedge. And I fished it out and it was the like nozzle from the soda fountain, like a, a large giant black piece of plastic. So when I told the waiter about the plastic like piece from the soda fountain yeah, in my drink. we caught his attention. Um, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Replaced my drink right away. Um, and then we weren't gonna get dessert. Cause uh, we were full, cause, cause we the portion full. sizes were full. Um, like, like I said, the, it was not inedible. No, it wasn't inedible. It was, it was overpriced. Good. It was overpriced for the quality, but, right. but not the inedible. quantity was good. But so anyway, we were not gonna get dessert. But he said, well, I'm buying. So we got the Italian strawberry shortcake. And right. that was on the menu was the second highest priced dessert after the tiramisu. And it was a very, very small portion. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad we didn't pay for it, but it was very nice of them to do that. And I figured they would after, cause I saw him walk over to the manager, yeah. uh, Brittany. It was over her shoulder, but I did see him talking. So I figured they may come back with something like that. And uh, we had it in the shortbread. You said it was... Or, it was or like store-bought, like pound cake. pound cake. And when I say small portion, like there were four, four little cubes, little cubes yeah. and they were like not even one inch by one inch cubes. So And then two, two strawberries halved. Mm-hmm. And then placed and, around the four cubes of little cake. Yes, and a they were like the cubes gum. No, yeah, the cubes yeah, like gum. I mean it. It was tiny. Yeah. <laughs> it was very tiny. It wasn't big. Um, well. total bill about seventy bucks. Uh, worth it for the experience. I said I thought the restaurant was nice. I thought it paid homage to Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, which we've been catching up on Disney movies and animated movies. So I thought it. It played off that nicely, and I mm -hmm. thought it, it had a lot of artwork, a beautiful fountain in the middle, yeah. uh, cool little touches from Lady and the Tramp. But the food? Mm. Let's not go out of our way. <laughs> <laughs> there are, uh, what, four or five better sit-down restaurants? <laughs> yeah, that one definitely places <laughs> at the end. That would be the last of the that Magic one's... Kingdom sit-down restaurants. If you are looking for a sit-down restaurant in Magic Kingdom, there are plenty of other good options. <laughs> so I think the final question I have for you is Universal versus Disney. After one and a half days ish at each. Um, speaking coronavirus terms or? Yeah, let's do that because that's what we're so, here doing. Coronavirus terms, I would say basically equal, I think. Uh, Universal, we hit on the weekend. So Saturday and Sunday. 
maybe a touch more crowded than the Magic Kingdom felt today. Uh, some of the wait times were, at least on the board, they were exaggerated, but at least on the board they were way higher than anything on Disney's board today on wait times. Um, but as far as the, like, people following directions and everybody wearing a mask and the temperature checks and stuff like that, um, I would say relatively equal. I would say you're correct. I, I think you're you're right on the money there. I think it's pretty equal. Yeah. Both sides. They both have their pluses and minuses for the way they're doing it. Um, and I think Disney's pretty thorough. They seem to be trying to cover their bases a little bit better in my mind, but... Uh, you know, once again, we were at Universal on a weekend. We'll yeah. see what, what it's like on a weekend in Disney yeah. next week. Next Saturday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's making it in. No, you gotta edit this out. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's going straight in. <laughs>